plugging in my mouse so it doesn't run out. Hi. When we were children and we were at the school gate hanging out with certain friends, you always knew um, or maybe had a sense that other people knew the unwritten rules of which group you could belong to, which you'd aspire to belong to and which ones you'd never want to belong to. Um, or perhaps, like I said, perhaps that was hard for you to work out. Maybe it felt really complex and confusing and you were never really quite sure which group was which or perhaps it was a blend of both, a kind of, um, you know, some of it was clear and some of it was unclear, you know, in that very human way. And in essence, this idea of knowing which group we belong to, it's where that sense of tribe um, or conscious choice of tribe starts to begin because of course there's a tribe that we're born into which is our family and then and then there's the tribe that we choose or perhaps the tribe that chooses us and I remember I remember being at the school gate with our son Rue when he was very little four years old first day at school and we walked in I was um, I was with him and walked in to the playground and pretty quickly he started playing with two little boys and just you know settled straight in having a lovely time for me meanwhile I stood at the edge of that playground and it felt very much like being back at school. Um, there was there was quite a big crowd of women who, you know, definitely felt like they were the in crowd. There was lots of laughter. They clearly knew each other really well. Um, they were making a lot of noise. They're all a bit giddy with excitement. And, um, and, you know, it was very obvious to me as the newcomer that um, that they all knew the score and you know and there were a handful of women like myself who were standing around who obviously you know weren't part of a of a group already and then there were some other groups who were kind of chatting and I was just remember sort of observing this and observing the fact that I felt a bit isolated and um, standing quite near me was another woman who was clearly also dressed to go into an office after doing the school drop off and she turned to me and she said you don't know anyone either do you and I said no I said I don't know anyone at all and and then I said oh and I just can't really be bothered um and she said oh nor can I and obviously we started chatting and obviously she is now one of my dearest friends so having gone from I just can't quite be bothered to make that effort to kind of step into the vulnerability of um of you know connecting with all these people that I didn't know and that she didn't know we then ended up connecting with each other and um became part of each other's tribe and and Rue, as it turned out, was also really fortunate that day or had the good taste that day to gravitate towards two little boys who are still his closest friends as they um, embark on their 20s now. Um, but it's not always like that, of course. We don't always land on those kinds of connections so quickly or we don't always uh, make those choices in such a clear way um, so easily and we might even find that we've ended up surrounding ourselves with people who aren't 
actually our tribe. And and that's really what today is about, is just a, a kind of reflection really, I suppose, on understanding what does it mean to have our tribe around us and how can we take ourselves into a place where where we f- where we feel we have the opportunity to actually choose to spend our time with people who really do nourish us um and so like i said we might find at times in our life that we look around us and actually the people that we're spending a lot of our time with really aren't our tribe they're not the ones who nourish us we don't necessarily feel that we've got that deep connection with them or we might find that perhaps we've been going through a growth phase and you know the i the whole point of this podcast is all about deepening self-awareness with self-compassion it's really all about getting to know ourselves and and like I said in um, in the episode uh, episode two of, of this season um, when I was talking about how change is not so much about transformation it's more about revelation you know maybe as we're moving through our life we're actually revealing more of our true self so that the people that we used to hang out with perhaps they don't feel that they know us anymore or they don't know us as well as they thought they did because we are different in some way we are perhaps even more of ourselves than we used to be perhaps some of those layers that we have put around ourselves protected ourselves with or strategies that we've put in place between us and the world maybe some of those have kind of dropped away and so actually we're slightly different and this can apply to family as well as friends of course you know we talk about blood being thicker than water um But it might be that the person that we were in our family unit, you know, um, playing the role that we got assigned, uh, perhaps consciously or subconsciously, um, you know, maybe, maybe the changes that we've taken ourselves through, maybe in some way that role no longer feels like it fits for us. And so therefore, perhaps the place, the slot that we slotted into in that family unit no longer feels like it's a good fit for us. And so um, perhaps even our family unit doesn't quite feel like our tribe anymore. Um, And we all have roles assigned to us, really depending on what family position you had, you know, where you sat in the family hierarchy, who came first, Um, the environment that you were born into, um, the experience that your caregivers had and and what experience they then passed down to you through their caregiving. Um, All of these things, they all influence the role that we play. So it might be that your role in the family unit was to keep the peace Um, to be the fun one, to be the one that listened to everybody, uh, to be the one that bucked the system, to be the one who was naughty, uh, to be the one who took a stand, pushed against the rules, etc. Like be the first to do things, whatever it might be. It might be that that role no longer feels like it's actually yours. And the challenge can be in a family unit in particular is that you might have that sense but when you come back into the family unit or you spend time with siblings parents etc that they don't necessarily know or they haven't yet seen that that's no longer your role and so it can feel like there's a a kind of a, a conflict or a tension there 
um, between what's expected of you and how you're expected to behave and the way that actually feels most true for you to behave. And so we can have this sense that maybe, maybe there's a little bit of distance there. And I'm saying that very, very tenderly, actually. It, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, it doesn't mean separation or disconnection, but it can, can actually just mean that start to create a little bit of space where you can be more choiceful about um, who it is that you most want to be spending time with and also working out how to express um, who you are now and the place that you inhabit in the world now as opposed to it being an old story that's just expected of you. I hope that makes sense. It's a, it's quite a sort of interesting um, area to think about with families. Um, and so it can feel that even the people who we might expect know us best, um, we can feel that perhaps we're not fully known by them. And, and all of that is okay, of course. Um, you know, there might be some pain or a bit of confusion uh, caught up in all of this or some complexity of emotion. But um, really, as with all of this work, everything that we talk about on the podcast, it's just about noticing how it feels, noticing what you notice. And then with that self-awareness, then we can work out what it is that we want to do with that experience and what we want to do with that information that we're gathering and how can we apply our greatest compassion to that awareness in order to best support us and best support others as well. So I suppose what's at the heart of all this is it is okay to be choiceful about our tribe. It's okay to be choiceful about who we spend our time with. And equally, it's okay to change, um, to reveal more of our true self. And with that, to see that perhaps we want to spend our time with people other than those we had been accustomed to spending our time with. And one of the things that can happen here, uh, this is a, a personal reflection, is that we might find that we end up uh, returning to old friends or deepening our connection with our older friends. I quite often look at um, friendship or relationships like the DNA helix. So friendship can be like a DNA helix in our life. Um, so the loops of the helix that take us away as we go into different experiences, perhaps live in different places, maybe work in, you know, different kind of industries, whatever that might be, have different relationships, connections with other groups. And then, and then the loop, it brings us back and we cross over once again. And that, that crossing point, that sort of connecting point, you know, maybe we go off on another loop again and, and come back. But, um, but one of the things I sort of find, um, you know, for myself is a, a real deepening of connection as I reveal more and more of us, myself, as I become more and more of myself, that it's, um, I'm sort of sinking even deeper into some of those oldest friendships that I have, not exclusively, I still have some uh, newer connections too, of course. Um, but one of my reflections out of lockdown actually is that it actually um, gave me an opportunity to really strengthen some of those connections, even, even with people that I might not have the opportunity to spend much time with, it still feels kind of strengthened. So, um, so I think that can be quite an interesting 
reflection just to sort of see like where are the groups in your life where you felt like the deepest connection and um and who really who is really nourishing you um and maybe maybe there are some older connections maybe it's newer connections whatever it might be for you um and so and so there's something here about choosing our tribe also means um compassion as well because it's really really important here that it's not about rejecting others suddenly i mean unless unless there's a toxicity and and a real need for self protection that's a very very different thing but um but you know if we're just noticing that um for whatever reason we're not being nourished and nurtured in the friendship groups that that we're in right now um it's not rejecting others suddenly because it, it can be hard for others when we change. Um, they might not be as far along their own journey or their own life journey. It might be taking them in another direction entirely. And that's OK, of course, you know, we don't have to. Our paths can run parallel alongside somebody else's and then. And then maybe they just turn in different directions and that's OK. It's okay um, for us to um, to move toward other um, people, other uh, groups, um, and it's okay for others to do the same. You know, we don't have to be always locked in with the same people for the whole of our life. You know, um, and and if we get sort of stuck in thinking that that's what we do have to do then that can bring its own challenges as well I think that's a whole other podcast to be honest um but there's something here about remembering that our time is precious you know this moment this moment here this is precious and knowing that that we're being listened to seen um, loved in this moment. That's what's key. So not spending time doing things that don't nourish us in some way, I think is, is important. And, and there's a, there's a very practical aspect to this as well. But by the way, if you can hear banging about in the background, um, it is Anton, uh, cleaning out the gutters. And the reason why I'm having to record right now while he's doing this is because I went to publish this episode of the podcast and um, realised that the audio hadn't recorded. <laughs> so I'm re-recording it. Um, and uh, it happens to be at the same time that Anton is bashing about outside. So I really apologise for all that noise. But anyway... Um, so I was going to say this is there's something really really practical here about um you know this isn't about having rose tinted spectacles on and um kind of you know an unrealistic expectation that we get to choose you know who we spend our time with every minute of the day because you know clearly that is not possible uh for the majority of us in in our lives you know um we may have to go to work for example in you know in an office in a factory in a in a school in a hospital like whatever it might be and in that environment there will be lots of people and there'll be people that we really connect with and there'll be people that we don't um oh we might have to spend time with family members where we've got a complex relationship or socialize in a wider community that we haven't hand picked. So, you know, recognizing that is also important. Um, but within that is, is the sense of um, understanding that we can be choiceful about who are in our closest group and 
and finding ways to connect with or to uh, manage the connection that we have with those we struggle with is also part of this work. So while they might not be part of our tribe, as you know, in the way that I've been talking about it, um, it's also about finding ways in which we can express or feel compassion toward others, even those with whom we have complex relationships, bringing that really compassionate stance and crucially being ready with clear boundaries to ensure that we don't inadvertently end up either being ridden over or um, sort of boundaries getting blurred between things that we um, know will serve us and things that we know will not serve us. And and just, just sort of extending that self-compassion out toward others too. Um, and it's the reason why when we do the metta, the loving kindness meditation, um, may you be well, may you be happy, may you be safe, may you live with ease. We also extend that out to people with whom we have difficulty and we send that that sort of loving kindness concept out to them too because this is you know that's what's that's what's important it's not um uh that's really what having like the fullest most compassionate stance is about um and and just a, a little note there it's not about condoning the behavior of someone who um acts in a way which is in um kind of violation of of our kind of moral code or our values but it's about being able to bring compassion to them even um even with behaviors that we find challenging so coming back to this whole idea of finding our tribe recognizing all of that and choosing being really choiceful about choosing who is in our closest group who are the people that we love and trust who love and trust us and and there's something here from uh, the human givens which is um, a, a set of nine I, I add a tenth one but the original set is a set of nine um, uh, traits or uh, human behaviors which are absolute givens <laughs> hence human givens and intimacy is one of those core foundations of what it means to be human and and what this this uh, it's a um, very um, robust piece of psychological research shows is that we all need connection with at least one other human who gets us so it may be that our tribe is intimate deeply intimate um, but the part of this work really is sort of seeing okay so so who how do we extend that out so that we are supported and connected with people who really really get us um, and the need for that intimacy it might feel greater or lesser depending on who you are and your personal set of dynamics and your life experience but that need is there for all of us so just thinking back to you know that story that i shared about being on the um on the playground and uh and debbie um my friend now <laughs> my now friend turning to me and saying you don't know anybody do you and me saying yeah and i can't really be bothered i mean that's literally what i said um and and actually what i was doing there was i was i was almost uh, consciously well not almost I was consciously isolating myself I was basically separating myself from from the all the other people who were around me and saying I, I don't need connection and it simply wasn't true I do need connection of course because I am human and luckily for me 
she reached out over that metaphorical wall that I'd built around me and and we ended up connecting in a very deep way and and in fact um yesterday when I recorded this originally I'd just been having a really lovely long conversation with her so she feels very present as I'm talking about this right now so that need that need for connection that need for the tribe you know being part of a tribe is part of what it means to be human at our core we are tribal creatures we are group creatures and so one of our you know beautiful opportunities in this life is to choose who's in our tribe who nourishes you and if you're not sure you're spending your time with people who really do get you, who really do nourish you, what can you do to make that happen? Who can you reach out to? Who can you connect with? And it might be that our tribe, our people that we spend time with face to face, might also be that our tribe is in a social space. And that's one of the huge amazing values that we get from social media actually all, with all of its you know deeply challenging things we you know we're all very familiar with the stuff that can go wrong on social media but also it is an amazing place to connect with those who really can nourish us in different ways so there we are i hope you enjoyed that that little exploration i'm really curious to hear what thoughts it raises for you and um <laughs> as i said i have recorded this before so i'm really really hoping that the mic has worked this time um and it's funny when i first started doing the podcast uh, this happened a few times where I'd record and it didn't record or the audio didn't record or whatever, whatever. And um, I took it as a sign that the original recording, for whatever reason, just wasn't ready to go out. And so that's how I feel right now, even though, um, you know, clearly it's a natural thing to, to feel frustrated when you've done something once and then you have to do it again. I always see it as an opportunity just to see how different it might be the second time around. And um, like I say, hopefully this time has worked. And if there's anything here that is feeling really sensitive for you, then do remember that you can always book in with me. Um, you can check in, have a discovery call, and you never know, coaching could support you in finding your way through complex relationships, if that's what you're experiencing. Um, and I'd love to walk beside you if there are things that you would like to work through all right, my darlings, I send you a hug and a wave. <laughs>